Hello writing friends, my name is Anna. I'm a fantasy writer who sometimes makes videos. As you already know, a lot of those videos are writing vlogs where I record my writing progress. And since I've been posting all these little b-roll clips of me typing away, I do occasionally get asked about what program I'm writing in. And the answer is Dabble. I started using Dabble in November of 2020, so I've been using it consistently for two and a half years. I wrote a 70k fantasy novel. I then did that novel over from scratch and wrote a 90k second draft. I'm also about 45k into another full length project. So safe to say, I think I've really put it through its paces at this point, and hopefully I can give a good review to help you decide whether you want to become a Dabble user. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Dabble in any way. I'm just a writer sharing my personal experience. Okay, thank you. Moving on. So what is it? Don't fret, my friends. We will hop into my writing workspace and take a tour, I promise you. But before we do that, here is a quick introduction. Dabble is an online writing app. All your writing is auto-saved to the cloud every 30 seconds and accessible across all your devices. It also saves a local file to your computer, allowing you to work offline and then sync automatically when you're back on Wi-Fi. Like other popular apps, Dabble offers organization tools like nesting scenes and chapters that are drag and droppable and note card functionality to keep important information handy. It also includes some goal setting and progress tracking tools and the price is subscription based. More on this later. Why did I choose it? First of all, I'm a Chromebook user. Simply put, I need something web-based. I can't install any software on my Chromebook. Before I got my Chromebook, I used to write primarily in Scrivener, but even after using it for a couple years, I found the UI, well, basically the opposite of intuitive. And more often than not, all the bells and whistles of Scrivener was encouraging me to procrastinate plan instead of just write. I like Dabble because the UI is clean and relaxing to the eye, and everything can easily be learned in one sitting. It truly feels as simple as log in, start writing. Unlike Scrivener, which always prioritized rolling out new features to its Mac users over its Windows users, new features are always being rolled out to Dabble users. And they usually come from community feedback of our fellow writers suggesting what we want to see on the app. The writer I'd suggest it to you are someone who is focused on drafting. You might have some preliminary brainstorming and plotting notes to organize, but nothing that extensive. You just want a simple, non-distracting place to get words out. You're someone who likes to meet word counts and use progress trackers, but you don't need much more in the way of fancy features. You're someone who doesn't want to spend a lot of time learning a software. And you don't need a lot of customization. Other apps like Scrivener, Notion, and even Campfire allow for a little or a lot of personal flair. The UI in Dabble can't be customized, and maybe this is a benefit to save you the four hours you'd otherwise spend setting it up with the perfect aesthetic so you can spend those hours writing. And lastly, you're someone who likes writing on the cloud and knowing that your work is always safe. All that being said, there are some cons to consider. The first and probably largest con is the cost. It's subscription-based, although there are usually discounts available for NaNoWriMo winners. And the monthly cost is not insignificant. Depending on which tier you pick, the price will land you somewhere around the cost of a Netflix subscription. Whether this is worth it to you is going to be completely unique to you, the project you're working on, and how much value you derive from Dabble. You can also consider a lifetime purchase, which is $500, and oof, that is expensive compared to Scrivener's 60. Text formatting is also limited. That means no color font, limited font types, and this is why I think Dabble is good for drafters, but perhaps not for detailed revising and line editing. This is really for spitting out words as fast as you can. Speaking of this, there's no multi-panel views. A second browser tab can always be open to get around this, but Scrivener users may not like only getting to view one pane at a time. All right, everybody, let's hop into the walkthrough. So here is a little bit of a tour around my Dabble and what it looks like. Um, here is my homepage. So you can see all my projects here. Um, I have my two drafts of my fantasy novel, um, Project Gemstone, some YouTube scripts, and then I have a dummy manuscript here, Time Travel Romance. And this is just a fake manuscript that I've set up so that we can dig into all of Dabble's features and take a real good look at it today. So let's open that. Here we are in my dummy manuscript for time travel romance. This is the default mode. I always write in dark mode 
Um, that's something that's available to the second and third tier subscribers. Um, that's my preferred mode. Um, so in all of my vlogs, you'll see me using the dark theme. And that looks like this. But for the purposes of the tour, I'll just go ahead and leave it on the default. Yes, let's start over uh, on this left hand side. So project settings, we will dive into just a little bit to show you what formatting is available in Dabble. So it's pretty limited. Um, for fonts, we just have a couple here and your line spacing. And that's pretty much all the formatting uh, that's available to us. Just like in Scrivener or other online writing apps, you can organize chapters and scenes into different sections. And all of these are drag and droppable. You can also reorganize your chapters if you wanted, and it will automatically renumber for you. Um, you can add new chapters or scenes by hitting these three dots here. You could even add parts, so if you wanted like Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Um, same thing here. And the nice thing that I like about Dabble is you do not have to compile your manuscript in order to read it all the way through or read it from the middle and go all the way to the end, for example. So I'm clicked here on the manuscript as a whole. And as I start scrolling, it just has everything compiled one after the other. So I can read everything here. Same idea here. Chapter three has four scenes in it right now. And if I'm highlighted on chapter three, I can just scroll through and it has all the scenes for me. I've only put text in two of them, but you get the gist. After this manuscript breakdown, we also have the plot planner tools, which we will definitely dive into. Um, and then we have story notes. And these are just folders of simple blank pages where you can collect some notes. You can also rename all of these folders if you wanted it to be like, types of food or anything else that your world building required. So probably won't be creating any really complex story Bibles here, but it does have a place for some basic notes. Down here at the bottom, you can toggle these panes. So if you like one more than the other or not at all. And then you can also see down here the synced. So I'm synced to the cloud. I'm on Wi-Fi. I know my work is being auto-saved. Um, down here is a quick little look at how many words are in this document. I'm highlighting chapter one right now, so I can see that there's 818 words in chapter one. I also have my word count for today. Today we've written zero words. <laughs> um, similarly, up here we get a quick look at the last 30 days in this project. Um, I set up this dummy project on February the 12th with about 5,000 words, so we can see that there. I have not written any other words in the manuscript. If I was going to write something today, then you can see that focus mode comes on. So this comes on whenever you start writing and continuously write so that your flow is not broken. I'm just typing gibberish to keep focus mode on, but you can see that it puts the sidebars away. And then once you pause your writing or shake your mouse, everything comes back. You can also see today I have now written 10 words. I can see this here and down here at the bottom. So let's go over here to the right. Um, first option here is our goals and stats. Um, in addition to stats, Dabble also has some goal tracking ability. So if we go to settings, um, let's say I wanted to write 20,000 words in this manuscript and I wanted to do it by April 30th. I would select my deadline. You could also exclude word count if, let's say, I already had 30,000 words in this manuscript and I didn't want that to count. Um, that's just helping with some math there. If you want to set your own particular daily word goal, you can do that here or let Dabble calculate it for you. You can also assign days off. So if you want to take some days out of consideration, like you don't want to write on the weekends, um, then Dabble can also take that into account when it's setting your goals. But anyway, let's say I wanted to get this document to 20,000 words by April 30th. 
we can see, as we mentioned, we've written 10 words today. Dabble has calculated that we need to write 210 words a day in order to hit our goal of 20K by the end of April. How many days are left, what we've written so far, what's remaining, and a reminder of our overall goal with a little progress tracker here. So since I have about 5K in this overall document, it's calculating that I'm about 25% of the way there. The other nice part about it for NaNoWriMo writers is that Dabble has integration with NaNoWriMo. So I can't show it to you now because it's not here in a camp month right now. This is February as I'm filming this, but in the camp months and in November, you'll have the option to set up integration here under the goal setting window. And all that does is it sends your word counts to the NaNoWriMo site for you, so you have no reason to have to go into the site and manually update your word count. Dabble can do it all for you. Next up, we have notes. So we'll talk a little bit about how to attach notes to certain scenes and chapters when we talk about the plot planner. But all you need to know for right now is that these are all easily accessible and clickable here on the right. There's also some comment features in Dabble, so you can make comments in your document, what that looks like is highlighting, hitting this here, and it floats there very much like Google Docs or Word, um, but you can see all of them here in this column. You can also hide the comments if you didn't want to read them while you're going through the document, and this is just some toggle of spell checking and style and grammar. So Dabble has pretty limited text formatting, uh, which is why I really think it's good for drafting and maybe not so much for editing. But let's highlight some text here so you can see. You've got bold italics. Um, this here makes it into like an epigraph. You can strike through. You can do some basic highlighting. And you can also make a sticky note. You can pick the color of your note. Let's go with green. And let's say I wanted to make a note for chapter one um, that I need to integrate the main character's cat. <laughs> um, you can drag it around in the text, but it can't sit outside of the text, so it's a little clumsy, can't be resized at all, but that's there if you want to use it. But yeah, the comments tool I haven't used too much yet, but I know that Dabble is working on beta reading features that will be rolling out soon, so I think that's really interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like. But all right, so let's go ahead and talk about the plot planner here. So looks a little overwhelming at first, but I promise it's pretty easy to understand. So first of all, we have my scene cards here. Your scene cards are always going to be this first column. You can see I have chapter one and then the scenes under chapter one, same with chapter two, et cetera, et cetera. And I've gone ahead and pre-filled all of this information in. Um, so I added scene cards for every scene in the book. And when I click on it, I can see a quick log line and what I need to accomplish as far as plot beats in that scene. And then we have some plot threads. And I have picked each of these according to, you know, what would be most helpful for me to keep track of. For example, one thing I always like to track um, is save the cat beats. And I find it really helpful to keep these handy. So let's say I'm working on a scene that really falls into the setup beat. I've copied this language from Save the Cat and put it into a plot card so that I can keep it handy. Same thing with timeline. This was going to be a time travel project, so I thought it would be really handy to keep the years and the month. And it's also a college setting, so my character is going through the semester throughout the book, so I wanted to keep track of when Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas was hitting. For the subplots, I had originally planned a best friend romance B-plot, and as I mentioned, it's a college setting, so maybe my main character would be working on her thesis. And I've added a couple of cards for when that plot is getting woven in, so I can keep track of when it pops up. Again, I would suggest using these much like the scene cards where I have a little log line and a reminder of what I want to incorporate as far as that 
plot thread. Um, let's say I wanted to add a new plot point, so maybe another B plot is the case of the missing professor. <laughs> this was supposed to be a romance, but maybe it's also a bit of a mystery. Um, and let's see, maybe here in chapter three, Eve spots the missing prof at the local coffee shop. And it's off. spooky. All right, so <laughs> there we go. So the handy thing about this plot planner, once you have filled in all of these points, is let's say I want to go work on this scene in chapter three where Eve and the best friend are assigned to a group project together. Um, so let's go look at that chapter and scene. And when I pull up my notes here, I can see all of the relevant cards over here on the right. So again, I have my scene notes. This is where I just describe what the plot points are and what's happening. And then I have the notes I made to myself about Save the Cat. I know it's October 2014. I've got a little bit of best friend B plot I need to weave in. And I have a little bit of the missing professor plot that I need to weave in. So all of that is really accessible and just boiled down to what is most relevant to the document that I'm working on right now. That's a really quick look at the plot planner. Um, let's go back to the manuscript for just a second. So let's say that you were ready to export your document. Um, I find exporting through Dabble so easy and quick. I love it compared to Scrivener. There's no lengthy compilation um, process. There's no wait. It's really quick. We just go up here to the book and we can export as Word or as a text file. Export the entire book. And boom, you can see it's already done. It's not formatted brilliantly, but it is formatted a lot nicer than Scrivener was, <laughs> in my opinion. And lastly, let's go ahead and click on this manuscript view. So this is probably the most comparable to like the cork board in Scrivener, where we have all of our chapters and all of our scene cards laid out. So if you don't like working in this top-down fashion, you can also work here on the cork board. And these are all drag and droppable, just like they are in the sidebar. So that's a really quick look at Dabble. I hope the tour was helpful. Let's go back to the voiceover. So will I keep using Dabble? All in all, I absolutely love drafting in Dabble. It's easy to read, easy to organize, and I find that it reduces the overall friction to fast drafting. I love the NaNoWriMo integration and simple goal tracking features. The dark mode is perfect. I have basically Pavlov dogged myself into once I see this black screen and I have lo-fi in my ears, I can spit out garbage words and feel very low pressure about it. But despite my love affair with it, I am interested in spending more time on another online app, Campfire. For the same features, Campfire only costs about $3 a month. It's not that I don't think Dabble isn't worth the price tag, because for me it is and has been for the past two years, but if there's such an affordable competitor out there, I think my wallet obligates that I give that a try. So if you're interested in seeing my thoughts on Campfire and a future review comparing the two, then let me know and I'm happy to make that. So that was everything I have to tell you about Dabble. There's a lot to consider when choosing a writing app, so hopefully this was helpful to anyone looking to try it out. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!